This is the introduction of the panel. The first one is the inverter control. Right now it's in the off position. In the off position, everything, all the lightings in the van will still work, as you can see. But with the inverter on, you'll be able to use larger electronics, including the microwave. So we can go ahead and turn this on. And you can see the microwave now is out. And you can use coffee machine as well. This gadget here is the heater. This is a vent for the heater to come out. The heater use the uh, fuel from the van. So be paying attention to how much fuel level you have would be helpful. Once you switch this on, you will start hearing air coming from the vent. Give it about five minutes, you will start feeling the hot air. This gadget here shows your water tank level. Right now the water tank is empty, so it's on the low position. Um, this enables you to monitor your water level if you need to fill up. This is the dimmer and light switch control. And the center button here will just turn everything off. Now we come down here, which will come back here for all the uh, four buttons function. The last button is not currently in use. For the USB ports to work, you do not need to turn on the inverter. But once the inverter is on, you'll be able to monitor the voltage usage as well. Moving to the left side, underneath the bed here, there's a battery monitor. There are really three ways to power the van. One is by the solar panel, two is the batteries in the back behind this panel, which we'll take a look, and the third is while you're driving the van, the battery is being charged as well. So over here you can see we have, we're 99% full. Now we'll go over the function of these four buttons. The first button is a water pump. As we all know, gravity goes down, so uh, there will be no water coming out from the sink unless this button is on. Once we turn it on, you actually hear the pump working. The third button here, um, we don't really use it in the summertime. Um, this is a water tank heater. Do not confuse this with a water heater. This is the water tank heater. When we go to the back of the van, you will see a large water tank. This button allows the water tank itself to uh, be kept at a non-frozen state. Right now in Alaska, it's about 30 degrees outside, so uh, we would actually do need to turn this on to allow water to be not freezing, but we have no water um, currently in the tank, so we don't need to turn it on. And then this last fa uh, one has a fan button. Um, it's, it controls the air conditioning. The air conditioner itself is powered by water. Uh, it uses water to cool down. Um, we'll go above the van and take a look at that. Stop. Above the van here is the AC unit. To turn the AC unit on, you simply tap this button once. And you can hear the AC is working. And to change how how much air you want this to come out, you simply cycle through this button. And you can hear you're getting more and more air out of it. Once you see this low water indicator, which has four water drops, if this one starts flashing, that means the water tank for this particular unit is getting low. In which case, we will we will turn this on. Allows the water travel from the big water tank to the smaller tank that works for the AC. You don't need to leave this on for a very long time, maybe 30 seconds. Uh, once the water is filled up, that light will disappear. This small control is normally kept next to the control uh, button panels. Uh, this one controls the back fan right here. If you have the AC fan on, um, if you turn this one on as well, it will create a circulation. To turn it on, uh, simply just tap the A button once. 
and you will hear it start working. Sometimes um, this panel is loose and the blade stops working. You just need to hit it, gently hit it one or two more times. Um, the fan will start working. And there's a knob here you can control how much air you want to have. To turn it off, same thing, button A. This is the fridge and freezer. They're two in one, uh, made by Domatic. Um, on the right hand side here is the fridge. It is always on because it's connected to a 12 volt connection. The inverter do not need to be on for the freezer and fridge to work. This is the freezer side. And like I said, the inverter can be off and your fridge and freezer will still work. Here, let's talk about filling up the water. There's a water hose come with the van. Uh, when you need to fill up this water tank, you just need to connect this end through here. Okay. And connect this end to your water source. Once the water start flowing, when the water is connect, hose is connected, make sure this is aligned um, to allow water uh, travel in. This is the closed position, and this is the allowing water to travel position. Be um, start filling up. The trick of that is when you can see the water is coming up, you need to get this included piece of tube that's normally stuck on the side of this. You need to stuck it in here, connect it here. This allows um, when the water is filled up to a certain level, uh, water will start coming out from here. So it prevents you from overfilling this van, this, this tank. And you can just disconnect. There will be water coming out from here. So it'd be really nice if you have like a towel or something um, to uh, help that. To take an outdoor shower, there are two things you need. One is this blue water hose that comes with it. Just simply flip this open and align this in. There's an alignment. And the second part you need is opening this one up. This is a sh outdoor shower tent. You'll be able to prop it right outside the van and take a shower. To use hot water, we mentioned earlier to do not be confused with one of the buttons on the panel. That is to heat this big water tank to keep it from freezing. Uh, this small unit is to allow you to have shower, hot water shower from the back of the van and also the front of the van from the sink. You don't need to do anything. This is 24 hours on demand. Um, if you want it to be hotter, you can always uh, adjust this into max. Um, I always leave it in between ideal and minimum because it does get hot very fast. This is how uh, we drain the water from the gray tank below the sink. There is a, um, I think it's a five gallon or eight gallon uh, gray tank under the sink. So uh, when you're in a place, you can't really dump the water. You can uh, close the valve and all the water will be safe up here. And you can actually see the water lines about here right now. Once it gets a little bit full, nothing will happen. It just, you will start seeing more water in your sink. And uh, we will show you how to drain that little tank right now. So let's open the water. And the valve is actually closed right now. And you can see the wastewater keeps going up. And now I'm going to close it. And we'll show you how to drain that tank. So right below, on the lower corner um, of this table, we put a sticker here. It says sink dump. And you don't really necessarily need to see it. You can just use your hands to fill it. Um, there is a there's a valve control right here, the two white tabs. So if you turn that valve counterclockwise to make it in a horizontal position, the, the tank will start dumping. And if you put it in a uh, vertical position, the way it is right now, it is in a sealed position. So we will um, open it and we'll see water start flowing. And now I'm going to shut it off. Same, same valve, I'm gonna turn it clockwise for half a circle. Same valve clockwise for half a circle, and we'll see the water stop flowing. 